Now I talk about demand shocks and the effects of such demand shocks in the model of the market that we've talked about in the previous videos. I use the term shock in this context not to refer to something that happens uh, and everybody is surprised about it, but in the sense that something happens that has a profound and strong effect on the demand curve such that you really have a shift of the curve. The questions that we answer in this chapter, the first one is how we can analyze shocks to demand in such a standard model of the market for a normal good. Then uh, we will uh, talk about what are positive and negative demand shocks and how um, do they affect um, the economy or the market. And the third question, of course, what the effects of such shocks are on prices and quantities at the new equilibrium after the shock. Now, to do this analysis, uh, we recall the standard framework that we used for analyzing a certain market for a normal good. We have the supply curve that in the space of the price on the vertical axis and the quantity supplied on the horizontal axis is an upward sloping curve. Then we draw the demand curve that we know that in the um, space of the price and the quantity demanded on the horizontal axis is a downward sloping curve. And we know that there is a market equilibrium where demand is equal to supply at the market clearing price P star where the quantity that is bought and sold is Q star and supply is equal to demand. Now suppose that there is such a positive demand shock that we conceptualize here as a governmental stimulus package in terms of cash handouts. So that was, for example, during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic when governments uh, gave cash handouts to households in the hope that households will spend these handouts and thereby um, support the economy. So what does do these uh, cash handouts do? Well, they raise the incomes of households. And we have seen that an income uh, change shifts the demand curve. So this constitutes a positive demand shock in this case. And now we use the market uh, diagram to analyze how such a demand shock affects the market for normal goods, say restaurants visits after the pandemic ends. So now we have here again the market um, diagram and the old equilibrium at the market clearing price P star and the associated quantity Q star. And if the stimulus package is enacted, then this leads to an outward shift of the demand curve. So we have a new demand curve that is further to the right. If the price for the good stayed constant, then we see that we would have uh, excess demand here. Why? Incomes of households increased, so they can afford more goods. And if the price level didn't change, they could afford this level of um, new goods. And that, of course, would lead to a huge um, excess demand that is higher than the uh, supply at this given price level. And as we know from the previous video on the market equilibrium, this would generate upward pressures on the price on the prices. So actually, such that the economy is at equilibrium, we would move along the supply curve upwards and the new market equilibrium would establish where the new demand curve uh, intersects with the old supply curve. And we see that this is at the level where the prices are higher and the quantity is also higher, but it's not as high as it would be as in case of a constant price. So the different effects are again summarized here and I provide the intuition in terms of the governmental stimulus package. So if the stimulus package is enacted, household incomes rise and this shifts the demand curve outwards. At each given price level, the households could buy more of the goods under consideration. That means that there would be excess demand. That leads to price pressures, upward price pressures, and such that the markets stay in equilibrium, we need to get an upward move along the supply curve towards the new equilibrium. And this upward move is then, of course, associated with a price increase. After all these dynamics have played out, we have the new market equilibrium. And at this new market equilibrium, we would have a higher price and a higher market activity in terms of the quantity that is sold in equilibrium. 
And what happens if many markets are affected, which is typically the case if the government boosts the, government boosts the incomes of uh, all the people in the economy, then some will buy more of the goods that they like, some will um, uh, buy, I don't know, uh, cinema tickets after a lockdown, some would go to the restaurant, some will uh, buy furniture or whatever. So if many different markets are affected, then we have an economic boom. And inflationary pressure, of course, because the mark the prices in all of these markets would uh, face upward uh, pressures. So at the aggregate level, this could uh, manifest itself then as an economic boom with an inflationary pressure, so a, high, a higher inflation rate. Now suppose we have the opposite, a negative demand shock. Something like that happened during the global financial and economic crisis from 2007 to 2009. When 2008, uh, the investment bank Lehman Brothers collapsed and was not rescued by the government. That led to higher uncertainty and so on. Banks stopped lending each other. House prices decreased. Unemployment rose. Investment collapsed and so on. And that uh, means that overall incomes um, started to decline. And investment declined and that all constitutes a negative demand shock. Now, how, how does such a negative demand shock affect the market for a normal good? Again, let's assume it's um, restaurant visits. So what would happen in this case? The demand curve would shift to the left or inwards because households have a lower income level and at a given price can only afford fewer of the good that we analyze here. Now, if the market price stayed constant, we see that there would be a huge excess supply. And from the video on the market equilibrium, we know that if there is excess supply, that leads to a downward pressure in the price level because there are fewer goods produced than households demand and therefore the price of the good would decrease. And that's what we see here. So we would not move along the supply curve downwards now to the new market equilibrium at the new lower price level and a new lower quantity. So to summarize this, um, we would face in case of this crisis, a collapse in investment, a collapse in uh, household income, and that would shift the demand curve inwards because households have fewer income available that they can spend on the good that we consider in the market. So for a given price, households can buy only fewer of the goods, which would lead to excess supply and therefore to downward pressures on the price. So for the market to stay in equilibrium, we would move, have a downward move along the supply curve towards the new equilibrium. And this downward move, of course, is associated with a price decline. At the new equilibrium, we therefore have a lower price level and lower market activity. Again, it could be the case that many markets are affected. That's exactly what we had in uh, the global uh, economic and financial crisis. So there are spillover effects between different markets. Initially, it may only have um, concerned the market for real estate, but that's spilled over to many other markets, of course, if um, incomes de decrease. And in this case, it led to an economic slump. So quantity decreases in many different markets and deflationary pressure because the price uh, level decreases or there is downward uh, pressure on the price levels in many different markets. That's exactly what we observed during the global economic and financial crisis in 2007 to 2009.